Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal in Casa Grande, where we joyfully share in God's love with each other and the community. Today, we welcome as our celebrant and our preacher, the Reverend David Chavez, who is the missioner for Border Ministry. Welcome and enjoy the service. Thank you for such a warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. We began in this fourth Sunday in Lent reminding ourselves that we take to heart God's call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and practice in our daily lives the work of reconciliation. You are invited, therefore, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen.
commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself an idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that we may live and may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God, and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest the miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon the pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, go on. Give thanks to the Lord whose mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Okay, go ahead. 
Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to the death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. And saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the wonder he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tear with his acts and shouts of joy. The second reading is from Ephesians. You are dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what we, what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen by their deeds to have been done in God. The Gospel of our Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So where is your heart today? Where does your heart live in at this present moment? Where is your heart? For many of us, our hearts have been marked by the uncertainty and the suffering of this past year as we complete an anniversary I don't think any of us ever imagined. It's been a year since lockdown, isolation, and really a year marked by suffering and pain, a national outcry for life, a global need for care and love and healing. During these times, my heart has been lonely. I miss my mom. My two sons miss their grandmother. I miss going to San Diego to visit my family. And I know that they miss me too. As someone who went through a bout of COVID-19, I miss my life before COVID. Grappling with these sort of long hauler effects, I slow down and so this year marks a pretty interesting anniversary for me personally. Yes, I'm filled with gratitude and at the same time I grieve, knowing well that many will be gathering again as we move towards vaccination and yet many will be gathering without loved ones, without friends. Grief and thanksgiving. And we're still in this together. We are. And so take courage and trust the Holy Spirit, which according to Jesus, will remind us of everything Jesus said. And as Paul reminds us, it is this very same spirit which will remind us that we are connected in an intimate way with the life of God and the life of God's people. So take courage during these times in this season. Remember, Jesus is before us. Jesus is behind us. Jesus is beside us, above us, below us. Jesus is within us. As both the way and will back to the heart of God. 
context matters, and here we are, and this is the context we've been living with for a while. And context also matters when it comes to our gospel lesson. It's important to remember that this conversation taking place is one that was initiated during the dark of night by Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a, an expert in the law, who came to Jesus at night with questions. And I imagine many of us have been there in those dark hours, in those night hours, with many questions. And Jesus receives these questions, but also the presence of Nicodemus draws him in with the wisdom of God, a wisdom that echoes back to this long history, to this long story of a God who has been a faithful to God's covenant with God's covenantal people. A God, a story, a family in intimate connection. Nicodemus comes to God, to Jesus, and is reminded once again that this expression of God's love and flesh before him in Jesus Christ is one of conversation that invites to us to step in to have dialogue, to open our hearts, to come at night, to come with everything that may entail being in the dark. Questions that sometimes vex our hearts. We're received by love and we're reminded that we are beloved children of God. For God so loved the world that God gave. And these words are so important to remember. I remember these, which, these were the words that I, I first memorized in Sunday school. I remember this was the passage, John 3, 16 in the King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I remember that. I re memorized it in English and in Spanish. But what I recall was that these words did not signal a loving, open God, for it was the God that was loving to some. It was a passage I memorized in order to assure myself that I was in, all these other folks are out. That somehow, because I believe that makes me someone who can look beyond me at friends from other religious communities and faith backgrounds and say, well, I, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I'm, I'm on my way to heaven and this is good news for me. And so my memory of this passage, my digesting of this passage was rooted really in a very, very narrow view of God's love. This is important, especially during these moments when, when, when we may be looking to certain certainties to sustain our lives. But if these certainties are rooted in the limit, in limitations to God's goodness and mercy and grace, then these certainties don't give us enough for the journey ahead. They may make us feel good and warm inside and kind of hallmarky, but they don't invite us out into the world to pick up the task of the gospel, to be the people of God where we are for the sake of God's goodness and kingdom proclaimed to everyone. So yeah, I think during times of high anxiety, we cling on to certainties whether they be phrases or ideas, perspectives, that if they narrow our perspective of God, then maybe we need to reassess these certainties. Like I said, our passage is part of a conversation. It's easy to forget that because for so long, we looked at passages like John three sixteen and, and, and built theological cathedrals around them. We've built walls to keep others out. 
We've built communities around a certain spiritual elitism around this particular passage of scripture. But it's always good to remember that it's about a conversation that God is having in Jesus with Nicodemus about life. And so we get this message, this invitation to discover not only the truth as Jesus is, but to walk in the light, to live in the light, to step away from those certainties that keep us in darkness in order to step into that space that opens up truth and goodness and beauty. And as the end of the gospel reading reminds us, a life that is lived in God. A life that is lived in God so that the works that you lead are works that reflect and demonstrate the goodness of God. This is why, as your border missioner, it's important to continue to tell the story that borders are not simply what we encounter along the U.S.-Mexico border, but borders are also social locations. The spaces that we define with our certainties and ideas that keep us away from others and fueled by the allergic reaction to otherness, we live within small small cells of confinement. That's why it's always important to remember the work that we do, the work that we've been doing in Nogales, Sonora, making sure that folks who are pursuing life, liberty, justice, have an avenue, a path that is greeted and guided by folks who believe that Jesus calls us to step into those spaces that are dark and filled with questions and fear and to shine the light, the truth, the goodness of God in the middle of spaces where walls go up rather than doors are open. And this is, I think, the challenge uh, that Jesus places before us because really the challenge is rooted in that statement, God so loved the world that God gave, God's very son. So it's not simply to open floodgates, but it's also to receive the presence of God in the face of the neighbor, the presence of God that as Jewish philosopher Emmanuel Levinas reminds us, the face of the neighbor that comes to us and ordains us to serve, to be present to be light, to be grace. I think Lent is a great time to sit with our hearts and to interrogate those concepts and ideas that keep us from discovering that God is at work beyond our control, that we have been living with the God made in our own image and in such a place we lost the view of the God that comes through us from out of the desert, from out of our communities, from communities on the margins, communities that are calling us to be a place of radical welcome, to be the church, to be the people of God, for God so loved, that God gave, and God continues to give through us. When we open our hearts, and allow our hands to unclench and take the hand of the neighbor, the one who comes bearing the image of the God of love and grace to remind us once again that we are a people on a journey and we accompany and are accompanied by those who are vulnerable, just as vulnerable as us because we've been part of this pandemic for this year and we have shared the fear of the world. We have shared the anxieties of the world. To step into that space and to walk together and to believe that this is the God that calls us to truth and light 
not only as an expression of loving God with all our heart, mind, and strength, but also as an expression of what it means to love the neighbor as ourselves. For God so loved the world. God gave his only son. Whoever believes will not perish, but will find rescue, grace, everlasting life here and now and in the life to come. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to join me in the Nicene Creed. Please stand. Together let us proclaim what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the lost. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in the truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of the nations in the way ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and live one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in your troubles 
and bring them the, the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all those who died, that your will in them will be fulfilled. And we pray that we have shared with all, our, all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. After um, I read all the names of those, um, you, you may add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. We pray for healing of body, mind, and spirit for Kay, Debbie, Mike, David, Ronnie, Joe Beth, Reverend Jeannie, Ron, Nick, and Norma, Daryl Jr., Vincent, and Imani, Cara, Sharon, Bertram, Peslo, Patrick, Debbie, Daryl, Bella, Michael, or excuse me, Michelle, Marge, Teresa, Diana, Richard, Michael, Lacey, and Deb. We pray for all the world's response to COVID-19. In your mercy, give eternal peace to all who have died comfort families and friends unable to visit, bring rest and strength and wisdom to all caregivers. Give us patience as we protect our neighbors through our actions and give great thanks to all people working on development, manufacturing and distribution of promising viruses, excuse me, vaccines to protect us and Patrick. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right. He is right. It is right. It is good and joyful to us. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Heaven and earth are full of your love and your love. Hosanna in the name of Christ. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only Son, and your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of through Christ our Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
service. I want to ask Father Chavez if he will tell us a little bit about his work. He is from the diocese and he is the missioner for Border Ministry. So can you give us a little information and of course tell us how we could see your work? Thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you for inviting me to be with you today. As the Commissioner for Border Ministries, I get the both privilege and joy of serving on behalf of Bishop Reddall to support the work that we're doing on the border, but also to support the work that's taking place in a lot of our congregations relative to border issues and concerns. For example, we, the diocese is in an ecumenical partnership with the UCC and the ELCA, the Lutheran Church, uh, that is part of the Grand Canyon Synod. And what, what, we're, what we do together is we lead Cruzando Fronteras. Cruzando Fronteras means crossing borders. And it's a ministry that is taking place in a partnership with uh, a partner in Nogales, Sonora, Sister Lika Macias, who is a part of a religious community. And what uh, she does is she provides on her campus housing for migrants who are waiting for the next step in their asylum process. So right now we have about 140 individuals who have been waiting through, uh, really, for the last nine to 10 months. We're talking children and uh, women and men. We have uh, just everyone who has come to uh, the border uh, pursuing an asylum claim. Uh, we have a community of 140 folks being served and cared for, but also folks who are being provided legal assistance through our Methodist partners, lawyers who meet with them through Zoom to provide them with enough assistance to get them to the next step in their asylum claims. We also have a great partnership with uh, the city and state and federal officials or offices uh, in Aaron Nogales providing us resources to make sure that folks who have been there long term can have not only the health and wellness they, they need, but also the children can have all of the academic support they can have while they await the next step in their uh, uh, immigration process, but also um, a community that through the work that Sister Lita is doing that has been empowered to restore their sense of agency and dignity in the context of community. That's part of the work that we're doing through Cruzando Fronteras. Two weeks ago, I was in NACO working with one of our partners, uh, Tom Carlson, who leads the NACO Wellness Initiative there in NACO and uh, NACO Sonora. Again, a wonderful wellness clinic helping combat diabetes, helping also through a community garden project that not only is at a specific place, but has, is at different school campuses. Uh, this uh, wellness initiative has provided the training, the capacity building for folks to actually plant gardens in their own backyards uh, on school campuses to help with food insecurity in the Naco area. So it's an amazing work. And then, of course, we're working in Douglas Aguapieta with our partners, Fronteras de Cristo, making sure that our partnerships with, again, Frontera de Cristo and the, the sisters of uh, Notre Dame and also the Franciscan brothers and the Jesuits that we're working together to make sure that the process that migrants are undergoing at this stage as they begin to move to the next step of their asylum claims, we're working on making sure that we're present and being the presence of Jesus to communities that are in need of accompaniment. So that's part of what I do. And the other part is I teach adult ed forums, provide adult ed forums around immigration policy, explain to communities how it is they can get involved in the local way. As I mentioned, border, uh, the border is both a physical location, but it's also a social location. One that uh, I believe the church is called to, to address, to acknowledge, to step into, and also be light in the midst of systems that marginalize, that uh, oppress, but also systems that keep certain people out of resources. And so I always encourage folks, that may be 
being part of the school board. That may be attending school board meetings, making sure that your voice is heard for the sake of the neighbor. It may be uh, finding different ways to connect with community that don't show up through the, or don't come into the doors of a church. And so uh, I always encourage folks to find ways to do mission in a very local, meaningful, transformational way, because I think that is important. We are a diocese along the border, and we believe that we are called to serve with that in heart and mind, and to trust that God will lead us and to be the people of God, a people learning, growing, but also a people being led and growing alongside many people who are vulnerable. Thank you. Thank you so much for that information that we need. And as he said, where is your heart? How are you feeling? How lonely are you? Where did this pandemic took you or is taking you? So thank you again, Father, for coming. Thank the diocese for having you to come and help us today. I want to thank you for being with us today. Please continue to follow us on St. Peter's Episcopal cg.org. I always look at Sandra because I always get it wrong. And then she would say yes or no to me. We do meet on every Tuesday evening. Sandra does um, evening prayer on Tuesday. That's live. And the uh, Karen Hart's committee is starting to do more of Complaint on Thursday at 6 p.m. So please join us as we continue to connect with each other. Um, our preacher for next week is one that you all know, the Reverend Laura Delia, who was a vicar at one time. She will be here with us next Sunday. So please have a wonderful, healthy, open heart week. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.